Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So in this video, I'm going to talk about one important, interesting use case with respect to monkey testing. You must have heard about what do you mean by monkey, te monkey testing. Monkey testing means that randomly you just go and then on your website and then just uh, click on anywhere, just do a random testing, put random inputs, and then you just try to break the system in terms of uh, putting uh, random values and clicking on somewhere or something like this. If you see the typical definition of uh, the monkey testing, you can see the various uh, definitions are available. You just like simple uh, quick check by passing some random test cases and then um, you just generate the report over here like that. So this is like your simple monkey testing that you are doing it. Now, what if can I do something with respect to automation for monkey testing with Selenium? Yes, we can do that. But before that, let's say this is my application naveenautomationlabs.com or uh, amazon.com or any XYZ project application that you have. I really want to know that where exactly my user, the customer is actually clicking on it. What is the most important area for this application or for this particular page where exactly the majority of the users are coming and then clicking on the links. For example, user can click on anywhere, right? They can click on gift card, then customer service, then suddenly log in, then order. They can go to the footer of the page. They can click on any image or any product. And these are the different footers are available. So we really don't know what exactly kind of flow the user or the customer is following. Like after Amazon currency converter, maybe they are clicking on careers. Maybe they are suddenly clicking on help. Then they are suddenly coming over here. And then they are just randomly clicking on anywhere. And then they are going to log in and something they are doing it. So you really didn't, don't know that what exactly the flow of the user. So this is called a monkey testing. So here the, the, we don't have any specific use case or a specific functional test case here that, okay, this is the sequence. This is the steps to reproduce this particular uh, test or this particular use case. We don't have any specific test or test steps, I would say that. So the best idea is that better you just calculate the heat map. So heat map is a technology. So you simple search for, let's say heat map area in a particular website. Let's go to the images section. This will tell you that, um, uh, where exactly which area that is most used by your customers. For example, let's say if you go to this particular application and then it will give you this particular um, highlight, highlighted area, you can see it's coming in the uh, green color and then red color and the yellow color. Red color is like the most highlighted, I mean the most used area in your application. You can see that, okay, fine, this particular application, it's saying that this is a heat map overall a graphical representation that the red one is the most used by uh, your visitors, like number of visitors are using this particular application. So that is, let's see, you can see that most user activity is this area. So red area means the most interactable area. And then the, then the, we have the yellow one, then the green one, and then different representations are available. So there are various tools are available in the market. You can just uh, use it. In fact, you can use as a WordPress plugin also in your application for your website. And then you can just actually check thousands of people are using your application, but when which area majority of the people are clicking on, uh, okay, on it. So like this, you can just uh, do something. For example, let's see this one. This is a pricing model for a specific application. And then this is what majority of the people they are using this. So we can just concentrate more on that particular area. So this is called heat map area. Right, you can just use their data visualization, heat map analytics, you can use that. So what can we do in terms of automation? For example, let's say this is one, and I found it okay on amazon.com that this is the most uh, frequently used area where exactly people are coming and then clicking on random links over here. So I have to concentrate on it because when you do the manual testing also, you just randomly click on it and you will see that suddenly system is not working. Suddenly you are getting uh, some system error on the page or something, the page got crashed or application got crashed or you are getting 404 not found error or 500 internal error or some suddenly some uh, server is crashing and then uh, you're not getting any proper response because this is so random and it's so difficult to identify this these kind of issues also. But advantage is that user can find or we can find some unexpected areas or unexpected bugs. We can see that and it's not required any special skills also. So, right. So some out of the box scenarios, we can perform it and then some uh, dynamic links are coming and then we can just click on it randomly and we can see that how exactly my system is behaving. But disadvantage, the cons is that there is no fixed result. There is, there is no, there are no fixed uh, steps to reproduce or steps to uh, follow in that area. And then suddenly something, a random 
uh, input data that you are passing or and it takes time also through automation also it takes time but for manually also it is like a really uh, difficult to identify and produce the same result again and again and follow the same test cases again and again so let's see how can we automate with selenium so this is the overall idea i'm talking about the monkey testing i'm just doing it random testing i'm doing it and i found it okay this is the heat map area the footer area is the heat map area for amazon.com let's see this is the use case how to automate that it's very simple let's say i'm launching amazon.com here and i just need to do what i need to follow the collect all these links which are available in the footer in this particular footer size so let's see this is the uh, career and i can see that it's available somewhere over here where class is equal to this vertical row and i can quickly create a csv selector or maybe i can create an xpath also so let's see div dot this one this is giving you one of one and then i'm saying under this give me all the lis and a so i'll say okay fine give me all the lis and a it means there are 26 links are available you can see that careers to help so these are the 26 links are available perfect so i'll do one thing i'll just use my driver dot find elements you can write this script in any language that doesn't matter so i'm using okay fine by dot what by dot a css selector and this is a selector that we are going to use it and this will give you the list of web element right the collection of all the element and then i'm saying that okay these are my uh, this is my footer list that we have captured so this is my heat map area okay for amazon.com and i'll say okay fine that system dot our uh, and then i'll say one thing that okay let's see how many uh, footer list is available total size and then i'm storing in a variable let's see this is my integer uh, footer count is equal to this something like this that we have written and uh, i'm printing it on the console that uh, total footer links uh, footer count perfect so this is a count that we have captured now i'll do one thing that uh, i'm just going to use a for loop index based for loop and then i'm saying okay fine integer i is equal to zero and then do what i is less than total number of footer count and then I'm saying I plus plus. I'm going to iterate this particular list with the help of a simple for loop that I have written. Perfect. Now, what exactly I'm going to do that? I'm going to generate a random number. See, let's see, for example, it's giving you the count of 26. It could be 28 also tomorrow. If it is a dynamic list or any number, it can be. So let's see, we have randomly, I mean, uh, we have a dynamically captured the count here. The count will be, let's see, in this case, around 26 is the count. And then I'll do one thing within 1 to 26 within the maximum one to uh, with maximum count of 26 i'm going to generate a random number so with respect to random gen uh, number i'm going to use a math uh, api and then you can use this uh, floor method is there math.floor and it's saying that uh, you have to give me a number let's say i'm saying okay fine math dot some random number i'm generating multiply by whatever the footer account that you have captured so math.floor, what exactly it will give you? It will give you the double value. It will return the largest, closest, the positive infinity double value. And math.random number will generate the number between equal to 0.0, .0 and less than 1.0. So between 0.0, .0 to 1.0, it will generate some number. And then whatever the footer count is there. So for example, let's see if you open the calculator and uh, let's see if our uh, random number is coming around 0.2 multiply by whatever the footer count is there the footer count is uh, let's see 26 so it will be 26 which is equal to 5.2 so it will give you 5.2 so mat.floor will give you 5.2 so i'll do one thing i'm going to store in one integer for example let's see this is my random index number is equal to this but this is giving you 5.2 a double number and then you're storing inside integer so i'll do one thing i just want only integer part of it so just give me five. So instead of 5.2, it will give you five only, right? So I'm getting some random index five. The moment you get the random index five, let's see, I'm just printing it on the console also. Let's see, this is my random index that I have printed on the console. Then I'll do one thing from this particular footer list, right? From this particular footer list, I'll do one thing dot get method because this is a kind of list, array list, and then pass the index i i or random index sorry random index not the i so footer list dot get i random index for example we capture let's see five it means you go to the five and then capture the text of that element if you really want to capture that or let's say i simple say okay fine you just give me the 
web element for that element so i'll say okay fine this is my a web element e is equal to this and from this element what you do <clears throat> this element first you capture the text so that i can just show it on the console that okay fine e dot get text and now you click on it so e dot click method that i'm going to use it so for example let's see uh, it actually clicked one two three four five eight. let's see clicking on amazon devices so it will click on it and then again i have to come back right and then let's see come back again so which method we have to use in selenium so in selenium we have to use a driver dot what a driver dot a navigate dot and then we have to use a back method so that you come back again and then click on somewhere else. So let's say I'm introducing back also here. When you come back, then you have to click on some other uh, random number. So again, i is equal to one. And then again, some random number, let's see this time it's giving 10, 10.5 or something or 10.2. Random number will be 10 in that case. And then it will click on the 10th uh, 10th link, which is available in this particular footer list. And then again, capture the test and then click on it and then again, come back. But here you have to remember what, when you click on back button, right, the DOM will be different. The DOM will be changed. So you might get a stale element reference exception. So in order to avoid that better, you create your list once again over here after coming back to the main page. So better you update your list. And again, the same list will be updated over here. Perfect. So let's see, this is what that I have written. And uh, this is a simple uh, logic that I have written. And let's see, it is working or not. So it's simple. Again, I'll repeat, collect all the links in the list of web element printed on the console, the total number of uh, links, and then writing a simple for loop up to the footer count. It means let's say 20 up to 26 means zero to 20, a uh, five time in 26 times this particular loop will be executed. And then I'm capturing one random index with the help of this formula. And let's see whatever the random index is coming. I'm just passing it uh, to this particular list and capture that element, capturing the text and then clicking on it. And when you click on it, and then again, I'm clicking on the back button. And then after clicking on the back button, I'll do one thing for the safer side. I'm putting a thread dot uh, sleep for, let's see, 1.5 seconds for 1500 milliseconds. Okay. So it will just randomly click on anywhere in the footer section and then come back and then let's see it is working or not. So simple formula. If there is no special method that I have derived here, but let's see it is working or not. So I'm randomly clicking on, on the footer. So see, I'll just see it's clicking on it. And here you can see on the console also. Yeah, see first number it generated 23, then three. And then see this, then eight sell apps on Amazon. And it will just keep clicking on it up to 26 times. See the application is quite heavy. So it takes some time to load. And then we have given the 1.5 seconds of wait also. So see 19, then zero, then six. And zero, you have seen that, okay, zero the element is couriers. Six number is sell product on Amazon. 19 number is your account. So some random numbers are coming here. You can see on the console and then it's actually clicking on this and then coming back and then again, clicking on it. So what exactly we are doing randomly, we are putting the data and uh, just randomly clicking on some link on the page. This is what like the end user will do that randomly. They can click on anywhere. So there is no certain specific steps for that, for the monkey testing, but you can just something like this. You can do that here. Okay, let's see, especially in the footer area, especially on the top panel area, especially in the top menu links are available or uh, the privacy links menus are available. Like that, you can just perform all these actions over here. See, it's clicking on blog and everything. So it will just execute up to uh, 26, I mean less than 26 because 26 uh, footer links are available. So see this again, see zero careers again. So obviously number can be repeated also, right? See one is getting repeated, zero is getting repeated like that so see 10 number is advertise your product and then once everything is done the program will automatically be over see amazon currency converter on 17 number so like this that uh, we are just using selenium to perform some random number click see random clicks we are doing it and then you can see that this is the overall result so we actually started from line, link number 23 to 3 to 8 19 0 career 6 and all and then see it's so nice right and then exactly same thing you can match it over here zero is that career and one is blog same thing you can see that one number is for blog and uh, zero for uh, zero for careers right so you can just create your css selector or you can just collect all the elements from any section if you really want to pick the section from 
uh, this area also because there is a huge amount of links are available here that also you can do that you can just perform something on this also because this is the majority of the people they just play around here majority of the uh, visitors they will just click on customer service gift card randomly click on this randomly click on this and then suddenly click on this this so you can just create one uh, list okay from the top panel list also from the category list also from the menu links also let's say this is my application you can just create a list of it create the list of this footer also create the list of total number of products available on the home page randomly you can just click on anywhere with this particular simple logic that we have written so this is how we can just produce a heat map uh, area testing or monkey testing that's again a simple interview question somebody actually asked me today via email so i thought of okay fine let me just cover that this is my idea of doing it what do you think about it can you perform the monkey testing in a different way through selenium if you have any other special specific idea please feel free to share in the comment section i am giving you one assignment okay let's say you go to navinautomationlabs.com you can just pick this application and you just need to write that up to uh, open card okay just so you can see this e-commerce application will open when you go there you just need to click on any random products over here like this and uh, let me know that okay you are able to perform it or not or you can just pick this and or maybe you can pick the footers also perfect so that's all for this particular video guys i hope you like it if you like it please subscribe to the channel share these videos with others who are looking for something interesting in automation and you really want to learn automation from the automation labs i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all